Today we're going to hear about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We read from Mark 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, so they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. There are a couple of words I want to talk to you about today. One is the word triumph. Have you ever heard or used the word triumph before? If someone wins a football game, you might say, they triumphed. This word triumph comes from a Roman tradition. If a Roman general won a war, the Roman general had a victory parade through the city of Rome. The general dressed in a purple toga with laurel wreaths wrapped around his head, and he would ride through the city on a glorious chariot with his army marching behind him, carrying all the wealth they had captured and dragging behind their defeated foes. These parades were called triumphs. We sometimes call Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday his triumphant entry. What was triumphant about it? Jesus wasn't dressed in grand clothes or riding a grand chariot. He was sitting on a donkey. He didn't have a great army behind him carrying the wealth that he had won from conquered nations, nor did he drag behind him the enemies that he had defeated. Jesus hadn't even yet won his war. Well, Jesus did deserve to have a parade because he was going to win a war. Win a war against Satan and death. And he would do this by dying for our sins. That is where he was going. And that is why he didn't need an army or a chariot. Jesus riding on a lonely donkey into the city where he would die for our sins was indeed a triumph. A triumph for you and for me. This is what Hosanna means. It means save us. Jesus was going to save us. He rode to save us. We should see that Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey is the best parade ever. What king has ever done more for his people? Those Roman generals just brought back gold and defeated earthly enemies. Parades that you might see today, perhaps on the 4th of July, they might give out candy, they might make you laugh, you might see colorful and cool things. But Jesus was going to die for our sins and he would bring back something far greater than gold and candy. He would bring back the forgiveness of sins and death and hell defeated for you and for me. Truly, Hosanna be to Jesus. Our memory work for the week is from 2 Corinthians 2.14, which says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Can you say that with me? Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ.